Let's go down to the next player that I've got here. That's Cam Akers. And because I really want to talk about Cam Akers because it leads us into a conversation about Kyron Williams. Cam Akers was someone I thought was a good one-year bet because of what he did at the end of the season with the Rams while Kyron Williams was healthy on that team. So even though that had happened, we had news that the Rams really liked Kyron Williams. They were together on the field, and Cam Akers was getting all the opportunities. So going into this summer, when it looked like Kyron Williams was going to have a role in that team, to me that meant he's probably just a third down back. I still like Cam Akers at cost for a bet for this year. And that caused me to miss on Kyron Williams. Now the good thing is, once we got Kyron Williams in that role, with the Rams early in the season. And it was very clear. Like it was literally the second game of the season. It was like, this is Kyron Williams job. There's no debate about it. The first game Cam Akers was still involved a lot. And then the second game, they're like, nah, that was trash. We don't need any more of that. At least like, I know personally, I changed tune very quickly to being like, yeah, I think this is real. What he's going to do with, with the Rams this year. Um, But I do think like, this is something that the signs were there for Kyron Williams. You looking back to, rookie year off season. There's reports about how much they like him, but he gets that injury in the very first kickoff of the very first game. And that apparently lingered for him with him all season long. They held him out of preseason this year. Like, I think there was those signs all along. The good news is that you know, like I did switch. Uh, I think everybody, you know, nobody really had the confidence that Kyron Williams would go out and do anything close to this. Even the people who were confident in Kyron Williams didn't think like anything more than he might get me some bye week fill in stuff. But like Tim, do, what do you think like we learn from Kyron Williams here and how do we feel about him? I do like the part of the conversation that you brought up about how they held him out of preseason. That kind of, that should tell us a lot that they don't even have to, they, they weren't guessing. They weren't like, Oh, we're going to waver on this as well as how swiftly they were to move Acres and almost for nothing. So I Acres could just be a locker room problem that that, that caught, you know, created the opportunity for for Kyron, but I very much doubt that just based on the actions that the team took because how many how many times do you see a running back just not play at all? We saw Josh Jacobs play in the Hall of Fame game. And yes, Josh Jacobs was still what a top 7 back that year, but he didn't even get out of not playing in the preseason. Yeah, Skyler, what do we think about Kyron Williams, that situation, everything? I think it was really tough because there's a few things that go into this. I think early on in the process on Kyron's rookie year, we actually here at the team spearheaded by, you know, Tyler is a, a Notre Dame fan. We actually liked Kyron Williams. We liked the way he played. We thought that he could end up translating well into certain roles within the NFL. But then the combine happened. And the problem with the combine is it was such a face plant. We were like, this guy's toast. He's done. And then the NFL seemed to agree with us when he went essentially undrafted. The guy was a day three pick there. And it kind of, you know, a name that you could compare to this past year is a guy like Kenny McIntosh, who where his role, you know, back in college last year seemed to, well, this, this could be useful in the NFL. A little bit of that Kyron game. He didn't run as mean. He wasn't necessarily as well-rounded as Kyron Williams, but as another guy who, when he got to the combine, absolute face plan. He's small, he's short, he's slow. And then the draft capital wasn't there. And so it was that that really pushed me off Kyron Williams, a little bit of a sheep to the consensus. Okay, he, he's fallen off. Even though we like the way this guy played, it doesn't matter. College isn't the NFL. And I think a lot of times that saves us from ourselves. And I think sometimes it could also kind of blind us too much where, you know, we're not giving a player Kyron the shot maybe we should have as quick as we should have because of our perception of that draft capital and his 40 time and his, you know, his BMI. Right. Um, but with Kyron Williams, I think the big thing that we were overlooking was what you were saying, the teams, the, the reports from the team, the beat writers, it was there. They really were talking about this guy. And it's unfortunate that it was what the first time he touched a ball in his rookie year, he went out with a broken foot and we really didn't get to see anything. And for me, it just buried him down for me. I didn't I didn't view him anymore as a player who had a shot in the NFL because he was all these red flags combined by he didn't play his rookie year. So for me, he was kind of just out of the picture and I'm on to the next guy. And a player like Zach Evans, who very early on when we're looking at tape and we're looking back at guys in college where I liked the player. I thought he was a top five back in the class. I mean, pre-combine, I had him as like running back four three, something like that around like guys like him and Sean Talker, I thought had good games. I thought Zach Evans played a little bit like Miles Sanders and how he'd have plays where you're like, this guy looks like 
a, cl- a class back. This is a good running back. And then the next play followed up. You'd be like, this guy shouldn't even be in the league. Right. So I thought he gave me a little bit of that where he showed the flashes, but it was inconsistent. And it was no one really seemed to go to back for him from his program. You know, kind of like I don't feel like Miles Sanders has quite got the backing throughout his career. And so I was unsure exactly what it was of Zach Evans. But when we fell into a locker room where I didn't believe in Cam Akers, right? I think that was the difference between you and I. Interesting enough, because we both didn't end up with enough Kyron Williams on our dynasty team, <laughs> yeah. is you were into Cam Akers. And so that blind you like, I don't need other guys. It's This is going to be Cam's show. The way he finished last year, the lack of depth behind him, it's just going to be Cam Akers. Why bother hedging around it? Whereas I felt, I don't think Cam Akers is a barrier to entry. So why not take Zach Evans at the end of the third round? That's a free dart at a guy who could end up winning the entire job. And in this, we were blinded to exactly what Tim was saying. They were trying out. It was Ronnie Rivers battling against Zach Evans. Like these guys were fighting for their roster spot, not necessarily a cemented job. And everything was reported to us that this was pretty confidently Kyron as the next guy up. And I think maybe... In a situation, a lesson from this one, I really don't believe in a player like Cam Akers, maybe take more stabs behind the guy, right? If there is legitimacy to Leonard Fournette leaving, maybe we shouldn't, you know, try to say, okay, well, it's, uh, I forgot the uh, the satellite back that had had a history played for Washington for a while that was in Jacksonville. It was like, okay, well, this guy is probably the one who's going to get a little bit of, he's the one, he, he was with uh, Alfred Morris when they had a, a duo. I'm drawing a blank on the name at the moment. McKissick. Well, no, it wasn't McKissick. No, it wasn't. Oh. Um, I, I digress, though. People, Thompson, people, Chris Thompson. Chris Thompson. That's yeah, the yeah, one. That's and I'm thinking, well, if a guy is going to get some run behind when Fortnite gets bounced, it's going to be Thompson. I don't put a whole lot of sock into this guy, right? Kind of like Kyron Williams. And I just kind of avoided, you know, the backfield. And it, it just kept me away from even taking stabs at players like James Robinson just to throw a kind of a guy who was worth nothing and that became worth a good bit. Um, I think Kyron was a better back than James Robinson, but I'm just saying in general, when you believe that a backfield is going to change and it's a team that tends to give a lot of opportunity to one guy like Jacksonville did, like uh, the Rams and McVay are known to do, you probably should diversify and just go claim the whole backfield because it's so cheap. You could have gotten Raquel Armstead, Chris Thompson, and James Robinson for basically free. You could have gone and grabbed Kyron Williams for basically right. free. I know in a lot of you guys listening in your leagues, Kyron Williams might have even been a waiver ad early season. So I think that's my takeaway is when you really don't believe in a backfield like this, maybe scoop up all the cheap parts. Cause in dynasty, we have the luxury of an extended bench, right? It's not like redraft where you you're, you're missing out on some opportunity cost by grabbing all of these guys. You really can do that. And then maybe to Wyatt's point, if you did believe in cam makers so much, I mean, if you believed in that opportunity, maybe, maybe try to secure up what's behind him. I don't, that's a different, different argument. But for me, when I don't believe in a guy, maybe I should go diversify because I was a little bit too heavy on what I thought would have been an opportunity for Zach Evans and just completely whiffed on Kyron Williams. And then also when he took off, it wasn't until they got rid of Cam Akers that I even believed it because for me, we've got this this back. I mean, he's stepping into a role where it was just opportunity driven. I didn't know if necessarily his talent and the opportunity would continue to play through there. Whereas to give you an example, another guy who did great week one, Kenneth Gainwell, right? I mean, Kenneth Gainwell week one came out. We're like, wow, I guess Kenneth Gainwell is the guy like DeAndre Swift too, right? I mean, he, he, people liked him in the past. People like Cam Akers in the past. So people, if you asked me after week one, would you rather have Kenneth Gainwell or Kyron Williams? I think a lot of people would have told you Kenneth Gainwell. So I think that's where for me, I was just too slow to move on Kyron Williams. I was kind of in my classic mindset where when we have a significant value jump and i think a lot of twitter or a lot of my league mates or a lot of the youtube comments are a little bullish on a player that i don't think necessarily has a lot to hang your hat on i'm just selling that's typically my thing i'm like i'm going to take this smaller roi so any kind of rooms i had two on a taxi uh two different leagues and i sold them for pretty much peanuts right so like the one deal I keep always bringing up, and I think we'll talk a little bit more about it later, was like Jahan Dawson. I tro- I sold Kyron Williams for Jahan Dawson and it felt like I just got a steal. And now I think managers would kind of laugh that difference is at least you know at least a pretty pretty nice mid first. So um, yeah, and and to, I'll push this out. People are probably well, what's Kyron now? I mean, this is a guy. He, he's in your top ten running backs for dynasty. I think he's very confident in there. I think you could have him as high as six like it, it gets really murky after that kind of top five and i think iron has proven himself. i think he's a talented player and for now i don't see any reason for them to go and 
back up that backfield. It's not something they typically do unless they have to. They're not hesitant to do it when they need to, but they don't need to. And he's played really well. Uh, and I think he's deserved the role. He's really well-rounded. He runs really hard. Um, that picture with him with Steven Jackson is pretty awesome this past Absolutely. week. Yeah, I've I've kind of turned turned in on Kyron Williams, and I feel pretty confident moving forward, at least for another season, you're getting the back you think you have. Tim, quickly, do you want to give like your little future look at Kyron Williams? Yeah, I, I think that as most running backs nowadays, you should really be treating them treating them like year to year. And as Skylar said, I think he's solidified in his role for at least a year. You get to kind of lean into the scoring if you do have him. And if it ends up kind of burning out, you really didn't pay that much to get him if you've gotten him at the right time. And something else too, just kind of going back real quick about how maybe things that we learned. I've always been the guy that like doesn't care what a running back runs in the 40. I understand that it helps your your upside. And I always thought Kyron was going to be more of a satellite back, but he's really proven that he can be a good runner inside. And I think that that's just as valuable to prove that you can be a guy that can be a running back on early downs and you don't necessarily need speed to do that. So like going back to, to Kyron, I think he's proven to be really a bell cow back that can handle interior carries and actually get gain yardage off of them as well as like kind of push the pile a little bit because he runs so hard that I just think it proves valuable because once again, like you said, the Rams are going to try to lean on one guy and this is going to be the guy until like either he flames out or he, he gets injured again, unfortunately. Yeah. And you know, while Kyron obviously doesn't have that top end speed, I think that was maybe even evident in college. He is a player. I think we can say with confidence that like he plays at a different speed on the field than he does when he's testing. Like there are those, just those players like that who just test worse than they play on the field. I think Kyron is one of those players. Um, but Skylar, let's move on to a couple of the things you wanted to bring up today. Yeah, well, it's just the transition, right?